So, we obviously have been uh, really enjoying, or most of you, I'm pretty sure, have been enjoying uh, Shadow Keep and the Annual Pass Season of Undying. Uh, we got Season of Dawn around the corner, and I want to make this clear before the next season comes out, because if I'm right, I hope I'm not. Uh, one of the things that I've took notice that could be considered, considered, I'm saying considered, I'm even doing air quotes, like, it's not, it's not what they're probably doing, that marketing manipulation to basically make us think, hey, you know what, this was a lot of content, so, uh, fair enough that the next season probably isn't that, that much, okay, so, one of the things that they stated about the annual pass is that hey, this time we got four season for the an four seasons for the annual pass. And when I heard that, my first reaction was this: What? What are you talking about? I'm so confused. What? What do you mean the first? First what? First time? First time doing four seasons? Excuse me. What was last year? Nope. The first time season on dying was given to us free. And I even stated that, gosh dang, I would hope it is. Because it is literally, in Forsaken terms, Season of the Gunslinger. You're probably like scratching your heads and some of you are probably like, oh. So, last year, Destiny 2, we got Forsaken and then we got the Annual Pass. With the Annual Pass, we got Season of um, the Forge or whatever, Black Armory. We got Season of the Drifter and then Season of Opulence. That's three seasons. So... Oh, we get four seasons this time. Wrong, technically. Forsaken was called Season of the Gunslinger. It was there, it just wasn't part of the annual pass because it was part of Forsaken. We were given that part of Forsaken, that season. And during that season, we got, you know, two patrol areas. We got a bunch of exotics. Technically, in a, a seasonal activity, which was the Blind Well, uh, we got a dungeon, Shattered Throne, a raid, Crucible Maps, Strikes, getting kind of close to familiar so far. So, Shadow Keep, with Season of Undying connected, it's essentially just Forsaken. With Undying connected, and yeah, kind of expect it to be free, because it just doesn't seem like most of the content in there is, uh... part of an actual fourth season, but rather it's just Shadow Keep. Now, benefit, benefit of the doubt, for next season, I'm hoping there's content in there that's worthwhile to compare it to Black Armory, but maybe a bit better. And when I mean a bit better, I mean some strikes, some crucible maps, or at least one, one of each. Because one of the biggest concerns I have is that this marketing ploy, them manipulating, being like, hey, four seasons, so more content. Uh, is so then they don't have to do much for the next season, kind of skip that, and then focus on the season after that for something. I don't know. I would hope not, but we'll have to wait and see. Granted, I don't want them to overdo their work. If it's really that hard to make content, then I don't want you to overwork your employees. Let them rest. But, I mean, with the amount of employees that they have, they have a lot of developers working at Bungie Studios, I mean, we have no idea how many are actually working on Destiny 2 content and or working on with the Destiny 3 content that definitely is probably being worked on, sort of, maybe, I don't know. Um, but we also know that they're getting a lot of money through the expansions, the DLCs, and the Eververse stuff, where they could definitely use those profits to work on assets for brand new content that we will love. Content is always great, and that's what we want. But we don't want them to overwork and stuff. Come on, let's be fair. Because these annual pass seasons are cheaper than an expansion, but we're still paying for it. And one of the things that I do not like about the future of annual passes is them promoting not just content, but content that goes away. So you know that you know whole thing about where uh, missing out is not fun? Well, they're promoting that in the annual pass. So, you guys that are experiencing Vex Offensive and getting all those Vex Season of Dying ornaments or uh, weapons and armor, well, still we have no word from Bungie if uh, when 
and if they are going to fully give any of this stuff right away in the next season, or if we're going to wait a whole year or what, because they did say that when the activity goes away, obviously you're not going to get any of that season stuff anymore, and they didn't specify when we will be able to get it and from where. Like, where is it going to drop from instead of Vex Offensive, because it's not there anymore. It's going to be replaced with a new seasonal activity. And I'm all for them promoting the seasonal activity that will go away each season or whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I've come to just accept it. Whatever. But if that's like the main focus and there's not much staple content, actual content that's staying, like how we did with the dungeon, the raid, exotics and stuff, crucible maps, uh, strikes, all that stuff, then I'm going to be upsetty spaghetti, and so should you. You shouldn't be really going, yay, less content, I love this, this is great. No, we want more content, we want valuable content on top of that. So here I'm saying, if we don't get a raid layer, it's not like Black Armory. If we don't get new strikes of Crucible maps, they didn't learn anything from last year. <laughs> Where it was like, oh, not, no new maps, no new strikes, not even just one of each. Come on. And uh, if we get a, I don't know, less on story and less on stuff or whatever, that's fine. But again, I want this annual pass to be good. This is supposed to be a means of showing that Bungie is listening and that they're doing the right thing now that they're away from Activision. You know, because we've always been like, well, Activision is the one that's doing the ting, but now they can't really uh, have us do that excuse anymore. Um, this is all on them. And again, if they were to, I'm not a developer. I know that it's got to be dif difficult to make actual content. And, you know, I applaud the artists over there that do the music, the the art for the, the uh, designs, the graphics and stuff, and the mechanics for raids and all that stuff. Everybody. You get round of applause. You do a great job. I mean, the dungeon, I know people are saying, it's too easy. It's pretty cool. Granted, there's no new armor set in the dungeon. Uh, like, my gosh. Like, okay. But, fun dungeon. Easy. It's not supposed to be super difficult. It's not supposed to be a raid, per se. It's supposed to be like a beginner's raid. Or a, a mini raid that if you can't find six friends to play to do a raid, then you do that. But, okay. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. The future of the annual pass is what I expect them to be is something where it's worth the price tag. And that it's not way too stingy on the practice of focusing on content that goes away. Because Shadowkeep, if you really think about it. Shadowkeep was the dungeon. Shadowkeep was the raid. So, the only thing that we really got from Seas of Undying was, one, Vex Offensive, two, the two exotic uh, quest lines, and three, the, the, whatever, the Undying Mine thing that's going on, and whatever, yeah. Like, that's essentially it. I think I'm missing something else, but basically... Most of the content that we got was from Shadowkeep, and that makes me worried. Because if honestly, in the next season, all we're getting is exotic quests, a seasonal activity, and then something, I guess, to continue the story, without any crucible maps or strikes, or, uh, I don't know, something else that's interesting, um, it's gonna be disappointing. It really is. I mean, one of the big issues that we already are running into right now, even with Shadowkeep and Seas of Undying, so, even though we got we got a whole big expansion and a season at the same time, there's no new armor and weapons for Vanguard or Gambit or... Van, um, I already said Vanguard Crucible. There's no new weapons in Iron Banner. There's a new armor set, but no new weapons, really. Uh, Faction Rally's still gone. So, yeah. And we only got exotic wise that actually is a random drop not just from the quest the only exotics we really got was uh well i technically count divinity as like a random drop not really you got to do a quest but still uh is monte carlo and those armor pieces that you get for doing the story anyway so whoa we 
Like, there was not really much when it came to exotics. And, you know, normally I'd be fine with that, too, if they were just to be like, you know what? Lucky Pants. Let's uh, take the year one Lucky Pants from the Hunters and actually make them wearable. Where people are actually like, you know what? These are good. Let's uh, make them good. <laughs> like, they didn't even do anything to vamp, uh, revamp anything that was boring from the past of Destiny 2 Vanilla to make them interesting. So, I honestly am hoping that with the, when it comes to the future of the annual pass seasons, that we can see something that's really promising that we'll all like. I even said, honestly, I love the idea of the annual pass where content is not thrown at you all at once, which is funny that I say that because, uh, what was it? The day of F Festival Lost, it was Festival Lost, the exotic quest for Xenophage, and uh, the dungeon. Three things at once. I did all three of those uh, on the day it came out. Don't know how I was able to, but I did. Some friends, and it was a good time. But it really showed how much, uh, like, overwhelmness it is when you get too many things at once. So I kind of do understand why they split or spread out the content, and I like that format when it comes to the annual pass. But again, I'm talking about the format. I'm not talking about the the content being good, the way that we get it, and how much, and whatever. Like I said, we still don't know. This is just assumptions, but I'm still going to make videos about this because, well, one, I'm curious if I'll be, <laughs> if I will be right, and I don't want to be. Kind of like what I was with the, with the Eververse and the Bright Dust. I was like, hey, I feel like I have this tingling feeling that Bright Dust is going to be way harder to get when it comes to Shadowkeep, because you don't get Bright Dust from dismantling Eververse items anymore. And, uh, yeah, they said only on bounties. And I feel like we're not going to get that much Bright Dust from them. And I was right. Sadly, I was right. So it's another one of those situations. Again, I, I want to defend Bungie. I want them to, I want them to love me, because I don't think they do. Because I think they're like, this guy, he talks the mad smack when I'm, I'm kind of just giving you constructive criticism and I'm honestly just wanting the game to be better you gotta have some negatives to ensure that you do better trust me I would know I get I get those nasty comments and I read them and I go you know what I'm, I'm still angry at your comment and I don't like you I'm deleting your comment I'm kidding <laughs> but I'm just saying Bungie we love you we want you to do good we want you to always have that positive view, and by goodness, we want you to not be like the other companies that are looking like a giant meme right now because of how many corporate decisions that are anti-consumer that they are doing in their games, and they're not listening to their community. Bungie, you got something special, and that is a community that loves you. So please... Don't don't be stingy on the next seasons and uh, surprise us. Do something good. Hell, I even gave them a good idea where I said, hey, if they want to use a Crucible map and strike that's reusable sort of for the exotic quest, try and implement them within the quest. Huh? You know, like maybe at the end of the exotic quest, you do the new strike. If you do the next exotic quest, you go on to that Crucible map, but there's... AI enemies, PvE enemies, huh? Kind of like in Destiny 1 where they took Pantheon for the Night Stalker and uh, Burnout, well, Burning Shrine for the Titan and the Sunbreaker getting the Super and the Warlock was uh, whatever that Mars map or whatever. But either way, hopeful. Concerned, but hopeful. I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below on this whole thing that I'm talking about, about the annual pass and my concerns do you think that they're justified do you think i'm i'm right for being concerned and uh what do you hope that they do for the annual pass well let me know in the comments down bo down below but either way you guys have a chibi-tastic day and uh thank you for listening chibi out